Uh, Eden, uh, good. To, uh, thanks for taking the time, man. Uh, very spontaneous. I saw last week I was uh, on, a, on a different stream. I don't know whose stream it was, but I saw your name and I was like, hey, uh, I haven't seen that name in a while. And uh, I've always wanted to have you on the show to have a, uh, an interview to talk about the way that you, you, you trade in EVE Online. Uh, and so I asked you and immediately you said yes. And now a week later, you're already on the show. So first of all, thank you for taking the time and also for being so flexible. Yeah, of course. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, so let's, um, as I said, I think most people know what you do, but let's, uh, uh, let's, you know, let's think of uh, those that uh, might be stumbling about the stream that, that don't trade uh, a main trade or don't watch a lot of stream or content uh, about trading. Um, for, for those um, among us, how would you describe what you mainly have done in EVE uh, online or what you are quote unquote famous for? Uh, well, I think what I'm more famous for is just having 15,000 market orders. Um, I, I just call myself a tycoon and I just trade. You are. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just kind of trade uh, outside of Jitta and all the other regions. Some regions I have like two two stations that I trade in and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, I, I as I was telling you in the in the pre show, um, uh, some of you will remember that that site, uh, Eve Mogul that uh, that used to be very popular among traders in, in Eve Online, they they used to have a, a top 10 of uh, in, in various categories, I think most orders, most, you know, daily trade volume, that sort of stuff. And um, that's the first time I came across Eden Trade because I was battling in that top 10 and um, uh, and Eden was always uh, number one, or at least in most categories at most times. And so um, that was a fun little side game in EVE Online, I think, for 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 market players. And uh, uh, I, I kind of miss those days. I, you know, I when I started streaming, I stopped. I stopped being on there, even though the site was still up because I was managing other people's money. So I felt like I was cheating, <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I kind of miss those times. You you were very active on that site, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, when I first joined, like uh, I kind of broke Eve Mogul with all my transactions and market data. But I think there's only one time I wasn't number one. And I was pretty upset about that. <laughs> well, it wasn't me that knocked you down. So. Um, uh, I think um, uh, so. Most people that that watch my stream will know the way that uh, that I trade and Eve Online, which which by now the last two or three years has been a lot of sitting in Jita and uh, and 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 capitalizing on the movements of the markets, but not moving a lot of goods and not moving outside of uh, Jita all that much outside outside of little challenges that I do. Um, but uh, you do. So maybe, um, uh, Eden, can you go into a little bit more more detail um, uh, as to, you know, how how you how you make your money? Um, uh, how, you know, what 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 you spend most of your uh, your 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 time with uh, in the game. And then also um, you brought some Excel spreadsheets along, which is, you know, highly appreciated. And we will all we're all going to love that. So while while you explain that, I'll pull up some sheets in the background so we can start talking about that. Yeah, it's uh, well, I've, when I first started, it's uh, I think the whole thing that got it started was I couldn't find anything other than Jitta to, to purchase items for my ship at. So I just got like essentially just mad. And I was like, I'll just do it myself. Started in Stackmon with like, I started just posting orders. It was like, I got it up to like 3,000. 3,000 orders that I posted there just in Stackmon. And then uh, and then it just kind of went from there. It's I've narrowed it down to like 900 items just uh, to make it easier. So I just carry the same 915 items uh, all over in each of my trade hubs. So it's just consistent. But uh, essentially how I want to make my money is probably just off of lazy people because they don't want to go to Jitta and they'll just buy at the closest places they're at. So even like four jumps from Jitta, I'm selling stuff at 75% profit margins. And I, and I, and I buy all that stuff in Jitta. And then from Jitta, I just move it to all my trade hubs and just mark it up. And, uh, and people just keep buying. It's, it amazes me that like, Tashmer Khan's what two 
two jumps from Amar and people still buy from there or I'm selling right outside of Rins and I'm selling for more profit but for some reason people are going to the Citadel right next to Rins and Bran and buying from me I have no clue why it just it baffles me but the system works so I think we've established at length that um you you can't expect most people in EVE Online to make rational economic decisions. I think that's that's the sim simple answer to that. Uh, I, I see a, a, a Nev or Crota here in chat saying I like his style. Um, and I was telling Eden Trade that uh, in the intro as well, uh, Crota, he has a very similar style to yours. So um, uh, you guys are very, very successful at a, at a, at a similar thing in EVE Online. But anyway, uh, you brought you brought along some spreadsheets, uh, Eden, which is very very cool and highly appreciated because um, you know you don't have to share any of this um, with the world or with the community. But um, I think it's it's super interesting. So um, uh, can you tell us a little bit what uh, what I'm seeing? If so I'm seeing daily revenues here, uh, daily trade revenues between like five and ten billion, and um, an absolutely insane uh, profit margin around, I don't know, 30% here or something like that. Uh, so uh, uh, explain that a little bit. Uh, yeah, well, it's, uh, I just track, like, well, since January, I got back into tracking, like, all my daily profits and revenue. Um, it's kind of interesting because I'm always right around 1,500 transactions. I count that as... Every time something goes into the wallet, somebody could have bought five drones five times, and then that's five transactions, but it's consistent. Mm -hmm. And then it's consistently around like two billion per day, which it still baffles me how that happens for profits. Yeah, that's an, that's insane. But uh, so this looks like a lot of um, a lot of work updating orders. Is that your main uh, activity? Uh, it was until about four weeks ago and I changed my whole system around and now it's I'm finding myself with a whole lot of more free time because I was constantly deleting and reposting stock that was low um, but the thing that I do now is like I just I've been investing heavily since like December like I've put 300 billion probably back into my operation um, and now I'm just every t every day I'm just buying crap in Jitta and sending it to like all my trade hubs and then it just sits in the hangar until like I need to actually restock whenever it sells out and then I restock it that way um, mm -hmm. I used to do it the other way as like oh I'll just like delete it and just keep it, it would take me like eight hours per on on Saturday or Sunday so yeah yeah absolutely how do you move your stuff um to to the to the tr other trade hubs uh push x that's mm -hmm. it's I, I use them because it's kind of like insurance. If I do it yeah. myself, I would be spending too much time moving stuff. Yeah, we talked about that uh, uh, last week here. If if, um, uh, if if you use them and they actually lose a ship, it's a, it's actually a win for you because you don't even have to sell the goods anymore. Yes, especially <laughs> with my what hundred skill injector mess up last weekend. Nice. Oh God, what happened? Oh, whenever I redeemed it on my character in Stackmon instead of Perimeter, and then oh yeah, it was like it was like fifty billion. I was like, I'm not moving it. Like Push X is doing this. That's right. That's right. You you, uh, you mentioned that. So um, this is uh, this is year to date what we're looking at here. Uh yeah, so it's kind of what are we doing? Doing about a hundred and fifty to like two hundred billion in revenue per month, and then profits are right around consistently like 60 to 70 billion and then the transactions uh each each month is what around 45 to 50,000 transactions yeah that's a that, that's a lot how how often do you update your orders um usually when i'm just posting uh new well, whatever is sold out uh, the only other time I update them now is like if they're about to fall off, I got, I just go in there and like reset it for another 90 days. I try to do some competition with people, but I just I don't even update the prices anymore. Mm -hmm. Because at those hubs, there's a lot less competition than in the major trade hubs, right? Uh, yeah, just depending. Like Stackmon, there's kind of high competition there, um, and a couple other places. 
Yeah. Someone in chat is asking what's the type of item he's selling. And uh, don't worry, um, there's going to be a slide on the top 100 items. Uh, so uh, we're, we're going to get to that in a second. Before we talk about items, though, let's talk about locations. You, you brought along a, um, uh, a, a graph here on the, the different uh, stations that, uh, that you trade in. Um, so there's, there's big, big differences. Um, is that mostly like, is it the more time you put in the, the, the larger they grow? Or do you try various trade hubs and then you drop some that aren't working? Are you still there? Yeah. Oh, hi. Yeah. I, I can't hear you. Let me check Discord. Still there? Yep. I oh, can hear you okay. now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, it just depends. Like some areas of like Eve are more active than others per month. Um, but I think like the top one, L LTN, however you say it is, I think that's like a new player starting area. Mm -hmm. um, but you then... only sell there, right? You never you never buy on site. Like you never buy any products on site. You only buy in Jita and then you spread spread the love, so to speak. Uh, yes. Yeah. So I just Jita is like my uh, main. Like that's where I set my prices. Is just based off of Jitta. Is your stream still up? Like Twitch just went down for me. Oh yeah? No, I yeah. I can uh can you guys in chat uh everything good with the stream and chat? Oh, there we go. Back up for me. Uh yeah, yeah we could then, we uh... couldn't we couldn't hear you. Um we couldn't hear you for a second there. So um, I think it oh, might okay. be a connection issue on your end. All but right, don't yeah, worry. then and then uh, it just depends. Like uh, Stackmon's always been pretty high. Valor is close to like the faction warfare area. Fran is right right next to Rens. People buy there. I don't know why. <laughs> and then uh, and then it's just uh, literature. Is it's like four jumps from Jitta. It's like in the more active area. But uh, how I do pick like my locations is like jumps per hour. Whenever I am looking at something like the traffic, you got to think of like a busy road. So if there's more people driving down the road, you're going to have more potential customers mm -hmm. or people that are like traveling to Jitta to get what they need to fit their ship. Then there's a chance of them seeing my item on the way to Jitta and they'll stop off and buy from me instead. So, um, on some of these, there there's probably very little competition. But do you do you keep like besides Croda, who I know does the same, does very similar things to what you do? Are there like other people that are copying your style or that uh, you keep on seeing? Uh, that I I don't know. It's I I stopped tracking that like several months ago. Um, if there's some people like in my discord that are doing something similar but like not as massive as me or mm -hmm. if they ask me like hey what should i sell i just i look at all my info as public if you want everything i trade and how however many i'll just give you the i'll give you the spreadsheet i mean if somebody wants to try to compete and post 1500 market orders go go to it yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't it, it's uh, it's a massive uh, uh, investment that you're putting in for sure. Um, I'm gonna do a raffle draw real quick because it raffle ended. So um, the winner is uh, Ogomu. Ogomu, if you're there, um, make sure you send me a message on Discord or on Twitch. There you are, perfect. And we're just going to start a new raffle. Here we go. Let's see. I have a question from chat. How does Eden trade do his hauling? Uh, yeah, he already said that. He he goes through push X. Yeah, I think if you go to the push X tab, they can just it'll show like what I've done in the past like four years. Three thousand one hundred and fifty-seven contracts with two hundred and sixty-two billion in rewards for push X. That's nice. Seven point yep. two trillion in collateral. 
and a volume of 468 million cubic meters. That's that's uh, not too bad. <laughs> yeah. Are you you're you must be one of their biggest customers. Uh, I think I am, and it's. Mm -hmm. uh... I think when I first started, they were just like, who the hell is this guy creating? And I was doing like either express like one day contracts. Sometimes I still do it. And uh, I post like 20 contracts in 30 minutes. Nice. So this transaction breakdown on this transaction breakdown tab is uh, just uh, the total locations, detailed data, right? Yeah, it's transaction by uh, market hub. Like each week, like starting January first, the first week of January, the whole way up till current, um, and it's just how many transactions each market hub's doing per per week, and it's uh, I think you are on the other slide. But... Yeah, yeah, I broke it down. Oh, okay. I, I just oh, oh yeah, you can go to the other one, but it's uh, with that, it's kind of still consistent, which to me still baffles me. Like if you look just the findings like Stackmon that starts 600, 600, 800, 700, 600, 600, 600. That's uh, so it's to me, it's just like, how is that happening? Like there are the same people just buying from me every month or what? Possibly. I mean, if they, um, you know, if they're just stationed out of there, I, 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 most, most people that are, that are buying modules and, 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 and ships and ammo for PVP, they don't really care all that much about price I've, I've learned. Right. So, uh, if, if they're just there, they, they will just buy the fit at the price that, that is, that is there at, but yeah, the, the consistency in transactions, pff, who knows? Yeah, and I've been working hard this year to actually get my sales and transactions up and like I said, reinvesting it. So you'd see January, you know, started at eight thousand, now I'm hitting close to like twelve thousand transactions uh, yeah. currently. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. What's your what's your end goal? Like I mean I know I know that and that, I, I, I know the answer to it because you're probably like me, uh, and you just like to see the numbers go up, but um is there something beyond that <laughs> i don't think i have an end goal because no. i mean i just i took a bunch of people's money i took like 1.4 trillion in isk and now i have to like pay them back um so i'm kind of stuck in that situation so i've already moved past the burnout phase and i just keep going with it now it's uh so so i'm kind of just dug myself in <laughs> Um, Croda is asking in chat, um, what, what sort of markup, uh, do you, uh, do you put your orders up for? Um, I, so the, I, we know that your profit margin is around 30% on average, but, um, do you have a standard markup or you, is it just experience from, from trading the same items all over the place? Uh, yeah, it's standard. Like when I first started, I broke it down by like between one and 5 million, one one million s five million s it's going to be like this percentage and then the higher the the higher the item is like a hundred million isk item you don't want to mark it up like sixty percent because then people are going to be like oh that costs one hundred and sixty million now I'm not going to buy that um, but now it's I've whittled like that down from like twenty different markup uh, percentages to just a direct forty percent on the higher risk items and then 75 percent on like the lower risk items but do you care about competition like what if somebody uh, outbids you like massively over time then you do you start lowering your prices uh i cared a little bit but watching it i just i don't care about it because essentially i know those people are going to go away they're going to get tired of doing it after like four or five months or they're going to stop playing the game and then I'll go back to normal. Maybe they yeah. won't. But it's mine. I look at mine as like the long term, like the long yeah. haul. So somebody could be doing it for six months, but I'll be here, you know, several years after. Yeah. And you don't, since you don't, you don't really need the cap, like you don't, you don't have a problem if your capital is tied up a month or two longer because no, it's, you don't need yeah, it. It's, yeah, to me, it's like a long term investment because it's I've already yeah. paid back just about all the investors and it's as long as I'm consistently sitting 
you know, at like, you know, the 60 to 70 billion in profits mm -hmm. and I'm not like going down, then if I'd start going down, like, oh, sh you know, I only made 40 billion, like something's wrong. <laughs> yeah. And with, with push X, do you have a, do you have like a key account manager? <laughs> like, is I there wish. somebody that is, is there like, because you should, right? I mean, you should reach out to them and say, you, you, you're going to, you're going to need some, some, some service, some, some custom service, or you're going to go over to the co competition. It, it drives me nuts sometimes when I accidentally like put something wrong in the contract. I was like, can you guys just bill me later for this? Instead of like a week later, I figure out the contract still in suspense. I mean, they 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 need to do this, right? So, uh, like, um, I I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can get one of them on the show next week, and we'll we'll get you a better deal here. Um, okay. <laughs> um, so this is what I wanted to talk about, the and this is what what other people were asking about. So what 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 are the item groups? And this is interesting because it's very different from from what I do in 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 Jita, right? I do a lot of I do a lot of raw materials. I do like the 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 big underlying chunks of industry but you're you're much more on the rigs ammo weapon uh, end of things like the things that pvpers would buy not industrialists yeah and it's uh when i first got into this i was i wasn't surprised rigs were the top seller because when i started posting my orders i noticed that people are not selling a lot of rigs all other than outside other than in Jeddah outside Jeddah there there's really there we're missing a lot of the rigs on the market yeah but do you see do you see big differences between the trade hubs or is it just consistent uh that I I couldn't tell you because I don't think I've looked that far into it uh, I just know like rigs they're missing like even in, I've traded in all sec a couple of times and they don't really have all the rigs that are needed out there. Ammo. I mean, that's kind of a given people need to shoot stuff. Then, of course, mining equipment, weapons, just all kind of what they need on the outside. And you said you're looking at profit per cubic meter, right? So per volume, uh, because, uh, you know, if you're looking at rigs, ammo, weapons, those all have high value per volume uh i don't think i do it by volume um because i mean you're well, not selling least... you're not selling hulls right you're not you're not selling ships because oh. you don't want to move them uh i used to do ships but then it just became so i guess I, it just difficult well one with the m3 because trying to you know you have to do several contracts with push x to move them um and then there's a lot more competition for ships out in the other yeah. market areas for some reason. That's like sometimes they're cheaper than Jeddah. I'm just like, what are you guys doing? And then it's, uh, but I mean, you can make quite a quite some money off of like barges and stuff outside of Jeddah. Yeah, it's just I think per per transaction, per volume, and per time. Uh, it's probably um, you know it's it, it it makes sense to do to specifically rigs because rigs are just very small and can be very expensive. Um, yeah. yeah. So I think looking at your top top one hundred list here, I think the the quantity is 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 pretty. You know, it doesn't say a lot, um, but uh, the uh, the items are interesting. So uh, revenue that's that's um, that's revenue. Uh, in your transactions, right? So twelve billion over a year. Uh, since yeah, since January. So that's twelve billion for the past four months. Four months, yeah. So yeah. And then uh, I took the ammo out of the uh, the items just because I mean it's really I mean somebody buys fifty thousand units of ammo, then it like it budges up the numbers. Um, yeah, but. Croda is asking how competitive is the ammo, for example. Um, I sell quite a lot of ammo. I just, I think it's, I don't think it's too competitive because I'm, I mean, if you look at it, if somebody's competing with me, I think most of, I think what, 12% of what I'm selling is ammo. 
I think if you go back to the category sales, it's 12.85% or 88 billion in ammo I've sold since January. So it's probably not too competitive since I'm the one posting the orders. Yeah. Yeah. And it's probably, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's smaller, it's smaller hubs. So, um, you know, I, I, I think, um, what, what you're doing right out of, out of experience and out of having experienced that whole burnout stage already several times, probably as, as most traders have in EVE Online, uh, is, you know, if you, if you stop chasing the order and if you stop under, undercutting, uh, each other all the time, then, uh, you, you still profit from somebody going in and just buying massive amounts. And that happens a lot, right? I mean, with, with ammo specifically, it could be somebody's just buying up, um, you know, a week's worth or a month worth just because they're taking it somewhere. Uh, and then even if you haven't undercut, you still profit from your order being fulfilled, even at a higher price. So, uh, you know, if sometimes being able to be more relaxed about it and not, not chasing every order keeps you not only sane, but also makes you, makes you profit in the long run. Do you also have the people that come from Jitta and buy from me and bring it back to Jitta? And because <laughs> the, price, the, the price went up, I saw one time I saw one guy. I was just for some reason I saw okay, oh, I bought this exact item from this guy in Jitta, and then he came like four days later and bought everything that I bought from him and brought it back to Jitta because the price went up. <laughs> that's that's hilarious. Um. So is there is there something um is is it, do you feel like the this this strategy you've been doing for the last four um uh f four four month uh, and probably you know probably longer but you you said you changed it a little little bit is that sustainable is that something that you want to uh you know do you want to keep it going for a few years uh yeah so like I've I've been doing it for four years now and it's I'm constantly like refining my process it's like you gotta keep innovating to keep it going and like when I first started I was like oh I there's no way I can do like a second market hub because it's I mean the logistics are just too complex and then you figure out a way to like make it easier for the logistics and the be posting all these orders and keeping track of everything. And then, like, last, like, um, essentially, like, four weeks ago, I just figured, you know, instead of constantly, like, posting the new items that I get, just let them sit in the hangar, and then I'll just post them when they sell out. So, and then, so it's it's just a lot. You just got to keep innovating and find, like, a new new process to do to make it simpler and easier. I think when I first started, like, uh, I spent 10 hours just dealing with one market hub and now I can do everything in two hours max on the weekend. Are you impacted by the market history API being down? Uh, no, I think I just use uh, ESI and I just pull my corporate transactions. Um, how I get, I, I think that a, the market endpoint API just directly links to like the, let's say like trying to pull the price from Jitta, right? Yeah. I mean, I, uh, I am, I am, va I'm, I'm vastly impacted by it because I make my decisions based on analyzing the market history, like it prices in the past. You're, I mean, it just dawned to me that you're, you're not impacted by it because you make your own markets and you have your, you have your, you know, you have your, your markups and you have you make your own rules so you don't really care what the price for an item was a year ago no it's like i just i only care about the current price and i have all like my data to go off of so it's like okay and you know stack one here's what i did for the past four months and i can make decisions based off of that um how i pull my market prices from jitta is completely ridiculous i go into janice and copy and paste all like 915 items and then i copy and paste that over into google sheets and then do like several steps to like pull that data for like my jitta prices um, i uh, i copy transactions from jeev assets into google sheets so i you know i hear you it's uh uh have you have you played with the new excel add-in 
I would think that they would have had me in the beta, but they didn't. Um, no, I they didn't like, invite me either, dude. <laughs> I was like, would you? I would think you would want the guy with 1,500 market orders to be in the beta to see if it's going to completely crap out or not. Man, I think you and me are, are among the top 10 in terms of market transactions. Uh, easy, yeah. And uh, I applied for it. They rejected me. The only reason I have access to it is because I'm an EVE partner. So they they then invited the EVE partners to come along as well. So I can use it. But uh, I didn't, like, by, by honestly filling up the application, I also didn't get into the beta. So uh, I think I think what the only thing that I can imagine what they're trying to do is they're trying to test it with people that that don't already know how to get everything from uh, out of out of the APIs. Uh, but yeah, it's it's strange. Yeah, it is. Um, so there's two two more big topics I wanted to talk about. One is you don't only trade incidentally, but you um you also have an investment fund to i don't even know it's it's not even uh uh you probably didn't even need the investment for your operations but possibly so is is this is your investment fund so a explain how what your investment fund looks like because obviously i do i do the same and you and i are probably the the two uh well-known public uh investment funds so a like how do you do it and b why do you do it? Uh, well, I started it like four years ago because I was like, well, how do I expand from here? Because it's going to take me, like any company, several months of saving up just to do like one more market hub. So I was made a form post and I asked for 110 billion. And then, you know, everybody was like, scam, scam, scam. Somebody actually gave me like 40 billion. The Eve Mogul creator gave me like 40 billion. And then other people saw that and like they invested. I was able to pay them back. And then I was like, you know what, let's make it bigger. Like I know how to expand. I it's kind of weird because I brokered a deal with my first investment, um, hundred and ten billion with my new investment and kind of bought myself out and rolled everything over into my current investment, which is like it's it was a billion S per share, so came out to like 1.4 billion or 1.4 trillion that I've taken in. Uh, I stopped taking in is because it was just too much money. And I was Same here. like, Same I, here. I can't, I mean, I could go out and get another like several trillion from people if I wanted to, but it's like, I'm only doing, I think three to like 5% on returns for the people who have invested with me. So it's just, it doesn't make sense. Um, and I don't want to expand any more than where I'm at right now. Uh, but I sold shares like one billion. You have the minimum investments one billion. You can invest however much you wanted to. Some people put in like two hundred billion. Um, and then it's I just started. Obviously, I just pay them back. Returns been like three to five percent. I think a year and a half, two years ago, twenty twenty one. It's I was doing actually double the revenue and profits. And then after like COVID just stopped and went away, like it, it's been cut in half by 50%. So um, that's where, that's where I was like, that's where I kind of went into panic mode. Cause I was like, I went from a hundred billion profits to like 50 to 60 billion. I was like, Oh God, what do I do? Um, but other than that, I think, there's only like three or four investors I still have to pay off. Uh, they came in like at the end, but it's everybody else is at like 25% paid out, 25 to 30%. So if whoever invested like 100 billion with me has been paid out 25, 30 billion in profits. They, um, uh, it's definitely a better, a better return investing with you, that's for sure. Uh, if you compare I, our profits, but, th but then you put in so much more work than I do. <laughs> I, I do a very weird profit payout. So it's, I pay out 60% of the profits if you haven't been paid out. So if I made a hundred billion, I'm paying 60% of that hundred billion to the investors. And then after you get like paid out. So if you say you could put in a hundred billion, I paid you out a hundred billion, then your payout of the profits go down to like 40% until like I double your S. So until I give you like, 200 billion back i'm 
paying you like 40% on 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 the payouts. It's it's a weird system I came up with, so Yeah. So there's there's somebody uh asking in chat and I don't I I think there's a misunderstanding here. So flee Lee is asking, how could someone start their own market when you have people like Eden Trade already established who would probably war deck you if you put down a station near him? I don't mean to sound salty. You do? <laughs> just kidding. Or critical. It's just um, a practical question. Um, so um, I, I think in terms of, in terms of trade, uh, in terms of being able to, to trade, I think the the entry barrier is much more capital than uh than than war decking but um how would you answer that question Eden trade um if you look if you go back to like the totals by location yeah one two three four i have five stations that are in mpc stations they're kind of at the bottom i mean the the Kador prime the prime locations are like in the lower i guess volume areas of yeah. mar yeah, but Norvakaiken, I just started that um, probably in February, March um, after Tama died. It used to be in Tama those assets. Mm -hmm. But if you if you add like another month or two to like Norv, you can see it. It doesn't matter if you have a citadel or, or not. Is what I'm getting at. Yeah. People go and just buy. They need the item. They're gonna go to wherever and buy it if it's like at a decent price and it saves them time. It's uh. In fact, I put up three three Asbels. Um, stack on the Fortizar was mine, and then I had to sell it out to I Choose You. Uh, but you don't really need a Citadel. I mean, to trade in, people just they'll go and buy wherever you want them to. The Asbels I put up, I put them under I Choose You, just because I mean it's a blanket protection. I was like, oh, Citadels, we need those to trade in, and now looking at it, we don't need those. Yeah. So the the short answer is there is nothing stopping people from doing this, and I actually think I mean I've sh I've shown several times that you you can build up wealth rather quickly if you're dedicated um, in, uh, in in trading. Um, of course, it's it's not going you're not going to be making a trillion isk in your first year of um, of, of playing Eve, but uh, I don't think there's anything that that Eden does or that I do that are keeping people out of doing of trading in any strategy they want to by themselves. Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah. And to go with that, it's, I mean, if you have like, when I started off, it was like, uh, here's my system, like stack one, here's what I'm trading. Here's my numbers. Here's my profit. Here's what I'm doing. You can go to the station and like buy from me. Like it's a legit process. You can go buy my items and see that I'm actually doing it. Yeah. So if you show all of that and be like, hey, I want a hundred billion and this is what I can pay you back, there's somebody out there who's probably gonna give you a hundred billion because it's a legit operation. So um, somebody's asking uh, if you're just using the map to figure out where traffic is uh, or some website. Uh, I just use the in-game Eve map. Like some of my locations, I just like look at look at the traffic like jumps per day, how many people are traveling through that system per hour. Um, the Amar ones, I was trying to figure that out, and then I just just you know like let's just simplify it and put it in all the prime uh, system names like Corazor Prime, Kador Prime, Candid Prime. I was like, okay, that's easy. Let's move on. So I was I kind of winged it on those three. Mm -hmm. Um, I've, uh, I, I keep a, uh, since I only trade in Jita, I keep a, um, a pivot table of my biggest customers, Eden. Um, uh. <laughs> we could, uh, we could make some, uh, some interesting, uh, uh, cross analysis here. Uh, but I see, uh, uh, you, you, uh, e e Eden trade clone. Uh, is Hold is your 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 standard go to? Do they just go through numbers zero one zero two zero three? Uh, essentially the whole way up to like I forty or something. But Eden Trade Clone One is definitely my purchaser in Jitta. Yeah, it looks like it. But we don't have as much overlap than I would have thought. I mean, it's a few billion, but it's not. Uh, you know, it's not hundreds of billion. Yeah. Um, 
but that's because you know i it's uh, i i i deal a lot in 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 moon ores minerals and that sort of stuff but when i go to Jeddah, it's like half the time it's essentially i'm probably spending 50 to 60 billion within an hour it's just yeah. like buy all buy all ship it so <laughs> but you go through uh you go through sell orders directly or what uh i just use the buy all and then kind of scroll through like the hundred items i'm buying and making sure i'm not getting ripped off like you know this t1 mod i bought too many to where it's like hit that hits you know the nine thousand dollar price instead of like the hundred million that somebody put you know they scam order up for i just have to watch out for that yeah yeah uh but so do you never put up put up buy orders ever no, it's, I've always thought about it, but I just, that's adding more work into the process than adding more com, com it's just making it more complex instead of, and I, I look at that versus my time. Of course. Yeah. I mean, if you're, you're, you're essentially the, the, the calculation is you're probably leaving five to 10% on the table, but you know, is that worth your time? That's a, that's a, that's your that's that's and and it, it's easier for me because it's one station but if you're you know if your 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 operation is already so complex if you added a another layer of buy orders uh then you would uh very quickly get carpal tunnel i would expect yeah it's, i've worn out like two at least two my mouse um since i've started like the clicking stopped working on it sometimes yeah Somebody's asking, how do I find investors? Well, <laughs> I think that is very, very, very difficult. So the way that that you did it is because, you know, people were aware of your um, of your operations and, uh, you know, were, you were active on the forums and that, that sort of stuff. Uh, and you you were also streaming in between. But I think your streaming probably didn't have a lot of lot to do with you finding investors, right? You had more like existing connections. Uh, not really. Like when I first started, it's like I was running level fives. That's how I made all my esk, and that's how I like I you know put the Fortizar up and stack on. I listed all these items, um, and I used my own money. Um, and then and then I had like a process in place. And then I was just when I made a form post one night, I was like, hey, I I need I'm gonna take 110 billion. That's what I want. And yeah. then finally, somebody came along and just took a risk. And I just did it to answer that question. I just did it through 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 streaming, through sharing um, th sharing uh, strategies and knowledge with the community, and just uh, you know being out there and showing my face and 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 building a, up a reputation. Um, I at the high point, I had over four trillion in investment and uh, close to five hundred investors. Um, that just became way too much work to handle administratively. That's why I'm cutting down now. But um, uh, I think it's there's there's realistically there's only a handful of people probably that are going to be able to uh, reliably collect um, investment funds. I, I don't think it's a it's a sustainable stra strategy for most people in in Eve Online because it's a very specific thing. That in. I mean, there's a good chance you'll get, I think a lot of like the investment scams, the people just get burnt out and then they're just like, screw it. I'm going to take the money and leave. I've seen a couple of those, like in my discord where they'll start up they're, I mean, they're doing it, but then I, it just looks like they got burnt out. Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, burnout is, uh, is, is the biggest, it's the biggest risk of trading in EVE online. I think <laughs> it's not, it's not anything in game. It's, uh, it's it's you not wanting to trade anymore. Um, there's there's another uh, question I have, um, and that is somebody mentioned earlier. Hey, is this the sn the, the snuffed out CFO? <laughs> Said somebody in chat. Um, uh, I don't I don't know about that, but you are um, you you have a you have a history with them. You said earlier. Can you uh, tell us that story? Uh, yeah, I think up until like December of last year, I was in snuffed out for like a year, year and a half. And that's where a lot of my profits went to because they're insanely expensive bits and chips. But that I kind of quit snuffed because it was just taking up too much of my like I would sit down on Saturday 
morning and go to start doing market stuff and then like a ping would happen and like three hours later like i'm in fleet four ain't nobody got time for that (laughs) so so i was just like i had to like it wasn't balancing out and so but i mean there's a lot of fun in there um i did i do have a what a market in rock so like i still like sell items to them and all that stuff so would you say that your activities in in snuffed out were completely separate from your trading or were you able to leverage that power in some way no it's 100 percent uh separate it's I, I keep everything if you're dealing with like the eden trade character i mean it's legit but if you were with like my pvp character like i'm gonna rip you off so of course only deal with the eden trade characters yeah yeah um I... go ahead sorry oh no you go ahead so um in terms of funding your your characters do you do you just plex your 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 accounts like how how do you account for the expense of 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 playing the game like that that because because if you have if you have close to 40 characters i don't know how much of those are omega but um you know if you're plexing your accounts that's that's technically should go against your profits uh i have 20 accounts so that's like 40 45 billion a month yeah um, but I have like a skill farm with the implant. So like mm-hmm. all 20 accounts, they're like, I'm pulling, I pull the skills out of them, sell them off. I think that comes to like 20, 25 billion every month. And then the, the other 20 something, I just kind of pay for with, with my profits. Yeah. I also do, can do industry. Like I have like 600 production in refining slots. So if I want an easy, several billion in three days i can just uh go a little insane with refining and creating t t2 components that sounds like a lot of work though it's very it's a lot of work and (laughs) i started i started an investment for it i took 350 billion i've probably i bought about 600 billion in moon goo and i'm probably just going to close that investment out here in a month and just go back to the market stuff because it was it's a lot of work so um, I'm going to ask you a question, and while you answer, I'm going to pick the raffle winner. Um, but somebody in um, somebody in chat asked, "So snuffed wouldn't protect your citadels if they got war decked?" Is the question? No, they would not. Like being in snuffed out, it's I had it was so secretive. I had no clue what was going on. Like line members like me didn't know what was going on. It's just like here's fleet, get in fleet, bring these ships bring all your dreads and then sit here quietly without knowing what's going on. I tried to get them, talk them into like destroying all the trade citadels in low sec. And I was like, you know, if I just put up trade citadels in low sec and you monopolize this, you're going to make a lot of money, but they didn't go for it. Really? Yes. They are just not interested in that sort of stuff, huh? I, I even showed up in Tama. I rolled through in one month. Uh, 60 billion in revenue and just in Tama. Nice. Yeah, but uh, as as you mentioned um, earlier, it's not it's not a very profitable business. Um, PVP and Eve Online. No, it's expensive. Depending on who you are with. Um, and then the other thing. I guess Nullsec, I just, I wanted to bring that up. I'll never trade in Nullsec again. Those guys, it's like they limit you and there's so many rules and regulations. I, I've tried a couple Nullsec markets of working with alliances, but it's it's so much red tape. It's like dealing with the US government and I, I just can't do it. I like the free market of high sec and low sec. Yeah, I mean, that's 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 an interesting uh, take actually. So you you're not... Um... So, so goons aren't interested in you bringing stuff into Delve. No, it's. I mean, I had interest from some people, but it's just like you get in there, and then like you post an item, but then the price drops in Jitta. Um, say like it's ten million, and then it drops to five million. But I posted it like two months ago, and it's still ten million or whatever my profits are. And then I get a bunch of like 
Diplo's convoying me saying you're selling over 25% of Jetta. What are you doing? Ah, I'm like, dude, yeah, I posted, oh I, my God. I posted this like two months ago. I was like, it's not my fault. Uh, I would, I, oh God. Yeah, I would quit and immediately they limit, if, they, if I had to deal with they, that. Yeah, and they limit your how much you could make in profit. You're like, oh, you can't go over 20, 30% of Jetta. I was like, this is ridiculous. You guys could be making so much more money in Nullsec if you ran a market like I do to your members yeah also i mean uh, the markets should be more more efficient and if you empower your people to do that then that should be but yeah um i'm, I'm sure there's also differences between the alliances though I'm, I, I'm sure it would work with some of them yeah there was a couple that i did but other than that it was just too much too much of a headache dealing with them yeah yeah so it's all um so it's all low sec then, but you don't. So you don't. You don't travel a lot, right? You you just let push X do it, and so you 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 hang out in Jedi and then uh, in your in your corporate HQ and um, and send the contracts around, right? Yeah, like uh, Eden Trade is just sit stocked uh, in Stackmon, and then the only character I really fly is like the Eden Trade clone one back and forth between the trade hub and Jitta. And then the only other thing I do is I fly around and fuel all the I choose you stations with Eden Trade like once a month. I'm his fuel junkie. I keep him fueled because I'm worried like I don't want him to run out of fuel because all my stuff's in there. Yeah. I don't pay for it. He pays for it. Okay. And somebody asked earlier why or how they are protected I choose you. Uh, I think it's just, it's like the TTT. I believe. It's kind. Of, I I really don't know too much about icy other than I help them fuel it. Um, but it's like the TTT with their whole like high sec, um, whatever you call it, conglomerate of. Yeah, they have pirate. an agreement. They have an agreement. Yeah, their agreements. Essentially, it's all of them in their agreements. It's like a monopoly of their citadels. I had an interview with Vili, but that's already like two and a half years ago when we talked about that. Um, but. I imagine it's still, since they're still there, it must be under the TTT protection. Pretty much, I think. Um, so, um, yeah, and is there anything, uh, um, any goals you still have? Or is it basically more of the same for the next few weeks, years, months? Like, really no goals other than to make us like the one goal that I've always been wanting to do, but I've always completely I'm asset rich, so I'm always broke. <laughs> <laughs> so, but like I think I'm starting to pull out of that to where like I'm gonna like really start having some money. Like the one thing I want to do is just like take a bunch of money and then just create, I guess, havoc with it. Like here's fifty billion, I want you to go destroy this, or a hundred billion, go over here and start destroying this stuff just because. I mean, that's kind of, it just seems fun to me to like pay people to do stuff for me and cause havoc. I think at some, at some point, uh, we're going to have to get together and just burn some money. Um, because I, I, I have, I have no goals at all. I am just, I just, I am, I, I'm, I'm really just the, the whole investment fund or the, the trading I really only do nowadays to for the community to stream to talk about it so i i basically trade so i know what's going on in the market um but uh, uh yeah at some point i'm gonna need an outlet so i'm gonna reach out to you and uh, let's see what we can do then we'll we'll yep. take crota along crota is close to a trillion um and uh, i as as far as i know crota uh, you also don't have anything to do with your money <laughs> so <good> yeah <laughs> We'll have to we'll have to kick something off. <laughs> although, although if I if I look at the the twenty six trillion that um, that the wormhole corps are pulling out of C five C six wormholes every month, uh, then you know a, a few trillion uh, it doesn't really sound that big anymore. No, there's people like one of my investors has like several trillion. I mean, it's just there's people out there that have way more is than like you and I combined. Which Absolutely. Is was my mind yeah i mean it's uh if 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 you there was several times in eve online where printing isk was with legitimately or illegit 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 illegitimately 
that's the word that Germans can't say, sorry. Um, that uh, uh, where, where it was much, much easier to come, come across is. So I think now, nowadays, um, unless you maybe you run an alliance and you're, 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 you're fleecing some of your members, uh, it's, it's, um, it's quite difficult. Yeah, but I think the like the one thing like with my operation, say, I always thought about it like if I was running an alliance, like this is in like this was backing like an alliance up, like this is like a safe and safe safe investment. Like essentially, it can never be destroyed. I'm always con constantly making isk and money and profits. Like the only way this would fail is if Jitta failed. So yeah. it, it, I wouldn't get into a situation to where, you know, like Billy and like the whole test goon war started to where like, oh, we're running out of money. It's like a, consistently pulling in money no matter what. It's it's hard to destroy that. Yeah. So um, Lee won't let it go. He says, why not donate some money to Eve Uni Magic School Bus? Uh, or signal cartel. I have have done. T I have done two out of those three things, uh, but you know. But then again, those, uh, the, those with that type of money, there isn't that much good that those um, that those organizations could do. I think uh, you know the the magic school bus is fantastic, but I don't think um, I don't think Mike Mike's issue right now is that he doesn't have enough funds to 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 run his magic school bus but, i kind of sure. i do i do odd things with my money like i'll sit in the eve discord and like watch somebody typing like oh i just lost my ship or one guy i remember it was like hey can anybody like buy me a praxis because i got and i'll like pay you back and it's like i just sometimes just like give people random isk i'm just like monitoring the channel seeing like what new player can i give this to like one time I asked, I was like, does anybody need anything in Eve one night just randomly? And he's like, I could use a billion esque. I was like, hold on, let me log on my shit, my character. <laughs> like, holy shit, you transferred me a, a billion esque. I'm like, yep, yeah, there you go. Santa. being Playing Santa. Yeah. Um, all right. So... Um... Before we um, before we say goodbye here, uh, chat any any last minute questions for uh, for Eden Trade while we have uh, him here. Um, by the way, I'm sure uh, you know uh, uh, Eden. Uh, come back anytime if you uh, wanna wanna hang out. I think we have a lot of um, shared interests in terms of uh, what's going on in the market. If you wanna come hang out and talk uh, talk talk markets um, uh, anytime, you're welcome. Okay, that sounds good. So let me see if somebody has a question. Is that billion still available? Ha huh, ha. Huh. Uh, uh, it's all. It's I'm a random player. <laughs> so I think all, the only questions are now uh, related to people wanting money. Tell him it's always nice to see him buy stuff. Yeah. So Double D, he he's a he's a big. Uh, uh, I don't say his name, uh, but. <laughs> But uh, Eden Trade, if you're if you're looking at the Twitch chat, then you can see who it is. He's a uh, a big uh, tier tier two ship and prob and presumably other thing producer. If you're buying from him, then uh, then he think, probably also made makes rigs. Yeah, I think I've seen that name several times. Um, so what is the labor to insight ratio? labor to insight ratio flea i don't know what you're talking about if anyone if anyone understands the questions explain it to me please did this new war impact positively your business or not that much derivus is asking eden uh, the new war did you see a change no not really um i think because that happens in null sec i think i saw a bigger change when they did the faction warfare update because like i'm trading in high sec and a little bit in low sec so it's like the increased activity in theirs whenever I see changes or like when if Eve CCP does like a big marketing uh, promotion thing and draws in new players, I'm going to see an increase in my sales. Yeah. So Crota is asking, push X is quite expensive. Yeah, so Crota and I, we use public... Um, couriers um and we don't use push x when we do uh, move stuff i don't move that much but he does um why not use public couriers um just i'm guessing 
uh, time or what is it that you're saving Eden? Um, I use push X just because one, they're reliable. I think they've only lost me. They've only got blown up twice, ganked twice in high sec. And it's just essentially insurance. Like I'm moving, you know, anywhere from like a billion to 3 billion. Every time I use them, sometimes they've moved like 50 billion, but it's, they get it there. It, they're just reliable. I'm paying for reliability, speed, and insurance. And it's if you think about it, I'm moving. Say if I move two two billion with one of their contracts, even if I do like the uh, the one day, like it costs me maybe a hundred to two hundred million to, in some locations. But on that billion or two billion, I should technically be making like a billion back on two billion. Uh, 70, 750 million on that two billion. Yeah, there, there are, there are just some like, there's some people on the public contracts that are just um, hauling stuff for way too cheap. Uh, so um, yeah, in the end, it's a question of you know if 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 your volume is so high that you don't want to deal with the public contracts, then I totally understand that. Yeah. Um, Somebody's asking, since the whole hate list thing happened, does either of you have plans to swoop in and start buying all the trig materials? Um, I, I used to buy all the, the trig materials uh, from hate list, so I don't I don't know what that question means in that context. Uh, was he buying a lot of it? I don't, don't Me, know. No, it's, I just do my 915 items and switch them out. If they're not selling yeah. well. I just do 400. <laughs> I used to do three three thousand with capital modules, so yeah. That, but that's yeah. That there, but yeah. But you know, yeah. I I I have I have looked at how many items are big enough for them to warrant me thinking about them, and I've uh, come to realize that it's four hundred for me. <laughs> yeah. But I also carry like the crappy like. T1 items because I always look at yeah. my trade hub as like you know a new player if he needs something to fit his ship I got it or if he needs that one T1 item but he's buying all the other T2 items to go with it yeah and you your margin is higher so you your your list is longer um, you know you don't need as much volume as I do um have the capital ship material changes impacted module demand? Ooh, I guess which which ones? There have been several capital ship material changes recently, but um, I don't know. Do you have an answer for that? I don't. No, I do know I destroyed the price on the Dunk Salvage drone because uh, the past month I bought like 700 of them and <laughs> completely depleted the... Uh, because they are selling so well, I can kind of deplete a Jitta, and I think I raised the price on those. <laughs> is that war related? Or not? Uh, no, that's just that dunk salvage drone. Yeah, yeah, but what are, what are people salvaging? Just crabbing? Just people people that are crabbing are using them? Oh, I I just I got rid of some items and tried some new items, and they're selling well, so then I increased how many I carried, and then right. the next thing I know, we went were you six Six million to like twelve billion. Six million to like twelve billion for them. So for you, it's for you, it's just a, a numbers game, right? You just look at the transactions and, and see. Hey, uh, thanks, thanks, Meta Show for uh, for for rating. Uh, Imperial News coming in with two hundred sixty nine. I hope you guys had a good Meta Show. Um, we're talking with Eden Trade about um, uh, about trading strategies. Good to see you. All. Um, all right, do we have any open questions? Um, Basically, what percent of trading is thinking versus grinding? <laughs> I think once, so I, I answer first um, and then Eden, you can, but I think once you have a good strategy in trading and once you have your spreadsheets set up and everything, then it's, then it's easy, right? Then it's 80% um, just doing the thing and 20% thinking. Uh, but everything going up to that you know learning about trading in eve online learning about the markets learning which items work learning about the geography of eve online getting there is what's what's so tedious once you're there it's really 80 percent autom automated what do you think eden uh 
for me, it's just create a process, keep refining the process, make it simpler, easier, free up your time, and then just keep refining it over the years and or months or however long you're doing it. And then it's it just there's essentially the grind start starts to go away. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. But uh, like, how many times would you say have you burned out of uh, uh, of trading? Like, how many times did you just step back and say, "I'm not gonna be trading for a while"? Uh, I mean, it had like, I mean, while I was when I first started this, I was working 16 hours plus this. It's like I was burned out from my job. It's I was essentially moved past like the burnout phase for real life and trading, and now it's just like all kind of like second nature. It's I mean, I just do it. I mean, I got I my weekends off. It's I got plenty of time to do it, so I just I don't even think about it anymore. Yeah, yeah, I got it. How many like on on an average in an average day? Like, how much would you say you spend trading? Uh, it used to be probably like pre like a month ago like at least saturday i'd start at like 9 10 in the morning and i'd be finished like 4 p.m so eight eight hours now it's i mean i do it a couple hours a week with this new process i'm using yeah yeah that's i mean that's that's a significant difference but it's also i mean it's what like it's what you need to set up operations like you have i mean that's 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 insane. I, I, there's probably not anyone putting more effort into building up uh, trade hubs or or trade locations within Eve Online than than you. I would I would yeah. guess. I don't know of anyone. I've probably. I mean, I've spent thousands and thousands of hours when I you know, over the past four years. Like, I mean, just crazy amount of time on it. Especially like Stackmon building up like a trade hub. It went from. You know, like 10 people in local. Now we're at like 40 to like 50 in local over those four years. It's taken a while, yeah. but I mean, it's become more active um, and all that in that area. And I so like I, what I'm getting at is like have a trade hub. It attracts people and people live in the area and it creates activity, I guess. Yeah, it's um, it's a good question whether it's a chicken, whether is it a chicken and egg thing where you you know, can can you create action because you go somewhere and and uh, and put it, put up a trade hub? Which I think that is uh, true, depending. I mean, where it's at. So, for the most part. Yeah, but it's good. It, it would be a good motivating factor for what you're doing. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I do it. And I, that's what sometimes I'm just like, why am I doing this? I was like, I'm just selling stuff to people that need stuff. Yeah. Instead of going 20 jumps to Jitta to get that one module they forgot. So Double D is asking for my uh, my big spending client list now. So uh, I'll I'll I'll, sh I'll show that uh, but we'll do that after the interview Double D. There's there's another question here. Uh, how often do large scale traders like you do one-on-one -on -one negotiations with people? And again, um uh, I think you you probably very little, right? Because you you don't you don't negotiate. You just buy up your the items, the nine hundred and something items, or how many you had. Yeah, I find like negotiating just too much work to do because it's you you got to haggle, and I'm haggling for just like you know, a four or five percent off of an item. It's it's really not worth my time. If I want that four or five percent, I'll just you know go in my spreadsheet and type you know add five percent to like my markup for what i'm selling and then you got to deal with somebody and they they might be short like if i need a hundred of these like this week and they only have 50 then i got to go buy 50 and it's just it's i need it i i like a consistent operation like go to jetta buy everything i need and then uh and ship it out instead of like waiting for a supplier yeah for for me it's um it does happen several times a week because people approach me when they want to sell very large amounts of something. Um, so I often buy in 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 bulk um, because for me, you know, doing a lot of margin trading in Jita or um, uh, or or capitalizing on the on the price changes that are going on in Jita, 
swing trading, as you would say, you know, to me, a few percentage points that I can save on large buy orders uh, does mean a lot. And also, um, for me, having lower margins uh, than you uh, being able to save a few points on broker fees is also big. So uh, for me, more um, and for you, probably less. Yeah. What's somebody else asking? What's the lowest margin with trading with five to 10 billion and 57 order? Oh, yeah, that's but that's a very specific. So AG Ender, I have several videos out on YouTube to kind of uh, talk about uh, uh, that sort of stuff, but that probably goes into too much specifics for for now. But feel free to hop onto our Discord. Here's a here's a Discord link. Um, there's a ton of people that can answer your question there. Um, all right, I think we can let you go. Um, let me see. Uh, do you think traders contribute something useful to the economy by providing liquidity and immediate ISK to people who need to sell ASAP? I mean, of course, traders contribute to the economy because we are making the market way more efficient, right? We're making sure that items are available. We are, uh, we are uh, the ones that are buying up. Uh, inventory from people that need to liquidate it quickly. So um, without traders, the, this economy would not function, uh, period. Um, I, I don't know what, what, what your take is on that, Eden. Uh, I, I on 915 items in Jitta, I raise the prices every week on them for you guys. So because I go in there and spend 60 billion on it. So or more. <laughs> I'm helping you out in Jitta. <laughs> Yeah, in, in in that case, you're helping out all 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 the other traders and and uh, um, some poor um, newbies are paying a little bit more for their ship. Um, all right, somebody is just uh, confirming that you absolutely can uh, create PVP content around staging stations or creating local markets. Yeah. How much of your income just comes from buying things that sell daily, but people can't be bothered to put up sell orders versus stuff that value fluctuates over time. So I think if you're if you're starting to trade flee, then um, uh, then you're much more the first category of people that are selling items quickly. Um, once you're trading with hundreds of billions, then you're relying much more on market fluctuations. Um, but that only applies to the way I trade and not the way that Eden trade trades, uh, because the way that Eden trade trades is um, is actually uh, supplying buying in Jita and then supplying other other markets with it. So that that would be daily daily stuff, but not buying from people selling the daily stuff. You buy in bulk. So that's I'm just answering that question for you. You didn't. <laughs> that was fine. Um, okay. So I think that's a that's a good uh, good point. Hey, thank you so much, uh, dude, for taking for taking the time. Um, super interesting. Um, uh, as I said, love to have you back uh, sometime uh, to to see how your operations are going. Is there um, anything um, that you wanted to share or or talk about uh, before I let you go? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I guess I will be at FanFest. Um, I think I, I get to do an hour presentation uh, there at FanFest. So hopefully, as long as I get my passport and all that, I'll be there in Iceland. Uh, and then hopefully by that time, the only other thing I'm going to try to do by FanFest is increase my profits to 10 to 15% more. So that's like my that's the other goal that I got. So we'll see if that happens by then. Nice. Um, I'm going to be at FanFest as well. I'm going to be presenting as well, so I'm, it's going to be good, uh, good seeing seeing you there. Uh, it's 20 year anniversary after all, and so it's going to be should be a good FanFest. And before people, I see people saying that it's a fake raffle. It's not a fake raffle. It's just it's called um, me not not clicking the button to draw because we're actually having a good conversation. But if you're just here for the raffle, then here you go. I'm going to pick a winner, and the winner is Macy. There you go. Um, thank you, Eden. Um, you know, uh, feel free to stick around in uh, in, in in chat, and uh, you know, good luck with your uh, your trades. Yeah. All right. Thanks. I'll probably just get off voice and then watch yeah. the rest of your stream. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Bye, man.